All right. Hey, everybody. So I was asked by a few folks in the Blacksmithing for Beginners uh, Facebook page to kind of go through the physics of the rebound on uh, on an anvil, right? The, the, the question comes up there fairly often of, does the rebound really matter? And, and really, it boils down to a pretty basic, straightforward physics concept. So... I'm kind of going to walk through that here. Now, this is version one. I'm, this has kind of the blank whiteboard idea here. Um, I'll put something together with actual video of um, hammers hitting anvils too, but we'll get this one out for now. Uh, so really, the whole idea of rebound boils down to a pretty basic physics concept. Um, and I guess our question is, does more rebound on an anvil actually make you move the steel faster? Everything else being equal? Yes. And here's where it comes down to. Uh, the key concept here is momentum and impulse. Okay. Those, are, those are the two key concepts here. Uh, now, the weird thing, this is just a kind of a weird eccentricity of physics. We can get into why this happens later, but the, the symbol used for momentum in equations is the letter P. Right? That's momentum. You'll see why part of the reason why in a second. But so momentum is a property of any object that is moving. Anything that's moving has this quantity momentum. And it goes all the way back to uh, uh, Newton and his three laws of motion. He was actually really describing momentum, even though it came out as force. But so momentum, the momentum of an object is equal to its mass, the amount of matter in it, uh, the amount of matter in it, very closely related to weight. So you can kind of think of it as weight, um, multiplied by its velocity or its speed. But direction matters. Right? So momentum is mass times velocity. The other critical part here is impulse. Now impulse. Both the beauty of it and the uh, complexity of it is impulse really has two good definitions. To start out with, I'm going to say that impulse is a change. That triangle, the, the delta symbol means change in. It's a change in momentum. So if my momentum goes from 5 to 10, I had a change in momentum of 5. So I have an impulse of 5. The other thing that impulse is... Impulse is also a force multiplied by a time. So if I apply, you know, two pounds of force for three seconds, I'd have two pound seconds of impulse. And okay? so, so these three, um, these three components are really the the key to the whole thing. Uh, so if we look specifically at an hammer, uh, an hammer, <laughs> a hammer hitting an anvil then the, let's see, let me draw my pretty little picture. Here's my fancy anvil. Here's hammer, right? Let's say the uh, uh, hammer has a mass of, I don't know, let's just call it two kilograms. That's, that's high. <laughs> that's like a four pound hammer. But anyway, so two kilogram hammer. If I swing it, and it hits, and it hits the, uh, well, let's say, okay, so let's say I swing it at three meters per second. Right? Yes, I'm using metric. Deal with it. <laughs> if you're not used to metric, you should be. It's much simpler. Um, also, physics teacher, so it's what I do. Uh, so two kilogram hammer, I swing at three meters for, per second. That means the momentum of said hammer, mass times velocity, remember, two times three, would be six. So I have a momentum of six. So if I swing the hammer and it just hits the anvil and stops, when it stops, new velocity is zero, so my momentum afterwards is zero. So my change in momentum, or as you remember, impulse, oops, change in momentum, is going to go from six to zero, so I have a change in momentum of six. Right? So that means I have an impulse of six, right? and remember, impulse impulse is equal to force times time. So a bigger impulse, bigger force, typically, unless you do weird stuff with time. Okay. So there's if your hammer hits and stops. 
Now let's our same anvil hammer. Two kilogram hammer. I swing it at three meters per second. Right? So again, momentum of my hammer is six. But now let's say instead of uh, hitting the anvil and stopping, when I hit the anvil, my hammer bounces backwards towards me. So now it's going to have some momentum after it hits my hard steel, after, after it hits the uh, your workpiece, your anvil, whatever. So I still have a two kilogram hammer, assuming you didn't break your hammer when you swung. And let's say it bounces back towards me at, uh, I don't know, let's just call it two meters per second, because it's not going to come as fast, right? But if, so two meters per second. But the key here is that we're looking at velocity, not speed. Now, if it's been a while since you've done physics, the difference is velocity has direction. So because I said moving down towards the anvil was a positive 3 meters per second, moving up away from the anvil would have to be negative. Okay? So now my momentum after I hit the anvil is 2 kilograms times negative 2 meters per second, or that'd be a negative 4. So now, my remember, my impulse is my change in momentum. So now instead of going from 6 to 0, I'm going from 6 to negative 4. So instead of only having an impulse of 6, I have an impulse of 10, which relates to a bigger impulse. And remember, impulse is force times time. So if I have a larger impulse in a comparable amount of time, I'm going to create a significantly larger force. Okay. So that's, a set, that's the basics of the physics of why... Everything else being equal, greater rebound off your anvil should equate to a, uh, a more efficient movement of steel because instead of just stopping when it hits the anvil, it's actually coming back up. Therefore, it has a larger change in momentum caused by the anvil or your workpiece. and a, So that larger change in momentum equates to a larger impulse, which equates to a larger force. Right? So... Again, just to recap, the key ideas here are momentum, which is mass times velocity, and impulse, which is both force times time and a change in momentum. So because the in momentum here we're looking at velocity, not speed, so direction matters. When you hit your, uh, if your hammer is swinging down to begin with and then comes back up after you hit your workpiece, you're going to have a much larger change in velocity, therefore larger change in momentum. Uh, so that's kind of the quick, dirty version. Um, like I said, I'll put something together with video of real hammers and anvils instead of my awesome uh, drawing on an iPad. So uh, I hope this helps. Let me know if you've got questions. Um, yeah, and we'll try it with some real stuff going forward.